Oh, hello, everybody. And how is everyone today? <laughs> oh, I am so delighted to hear that. And me, you ask? Oh, I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. And what have I been up to? Well, apart from the domestic chores, you know, <clears throat> hoovering, cleaning, Dusting, well, not so much dusting, because you dust and it still keeps coming back, so I skip that. But, but I've been doing all kinds of maintenance on the computers. I'm getting everything ready for Windows 11 to arrive. You know that's being rolled out across the world, different areas at different times. It hasn't come to me yet, but I've been hearing a lot about it from, well, people like you. Some people have been having some difficulties with Windows 11 and so they've been asking me what my opinion is. So here, here's what it is for what it's worth. Windows 11 is great for any Microsoft operating system that is already there that's using Microsoft products. The Office Suite, for instance, things like that. It will work seamlessly with anything that comes from Microsoft. When you start looking at things like, well, the simulator here, for instance, that's a different story. There are drivers that are needed to be able to connect the hardware to the software. And the software has to interpret all the commands so that when it finally connects to the simulator software, what happens on the screen is what you intended it to do. So some people have been finding out the drivers are not there. They're not being updated. So therefore, some of the hardware isn't working correctly. So what am I going to do when Windows 11 is rolled out around my area? I'm just going to stay with Windows 10 for about another year. Why? to let all the bugs get worked out. Anything new coming out has always got bugs in it. So I'm going to let all the bugs get worked out before I make my move. That's the first reason. Second reason, it will allow all the simulator software developers to work out their bugs too. And then when it's all smooth and everything is running, then I'll be ready to make the transition. Just because it's new doesn't mean to say it's necessarily going to be good for a simulator. Right, well, that's my, that's my take on it. So what am I going to do today? Where are we going to fly, you ask? Good question. Colin Irwin wrote me, he said, I have a flight for you, he said. KSFO to KLAX. He says it's one of his favorite flights that he likes to do. And why not? It's a good route. Now, I've flown in and out of San Francisco as a pilot, as well as, of course, of a passenger. So I know the airport reasonably well. I have never flown in or out of KLAX as a pilot. I've always flown in and out of LAX as a passenger on the big commercial jets, going to some other place. But I have flown in and out of the airports around LAX. I worked for a company that had a branch office in Los Angeles. It kept its aeroplane, this aeroplane, lovely little aeroplane this, and they kept it parked at Orange County Airport. Today, that's called John Wayne International. That's me sitting there in the cockpit. Ha! 
the young bold pilot ready to roar off into the wide blue yonder, eh? Anyway, the passengers would want to come in and take off when they wanted to take off, not to go to LAX where the parking was impossible and where you had to actually book a time slot to be able to take off or land. You go outside of that little, I think it was about a 30 minute window and you lost it. So not very convenient when you're flying executives around. So today we're going to fly into LAX on Ryanair 186. Yeah, and we're going to do all right. Now, San Francisco scenery is a lovely bit of scenery I've got for that. And it's made by Flight Beam. Very detailed, really, really nice. And the LAX scenery is by FS Dream Team. Again, another very detailed, very organized bit of scenery. And wow, when you see that, you think that you're actually there in the real place. Now I did check it out and I found that United Airlines does the run between San Francisco and Los Angeles two or three times a day. And we're going to fly on one of those routes, the one that is on flight 2604. 2604. Now, if you want to look that up, that is UA2604. Right, if you're ready then, and Colin, are you, are you there? Then come and join me as we go into pre-flight and work out our flight plan. Are you ready? Okay, let's do that. Well, here we are at Flight Aware, and we're looking at United Airlines Flight 2604. Here you can see the coding, the UA2604 underneath. And this particular flight is already en route and on time. This guest left gate E7 at San Francisco and arriving planned at gate 71 Alpha. I don't know which gate we will be at when we finally arrive. But here we are, this is their flight. And you can see where it's at at the moment. It took off, swung around, and then it's now on its way down. And according to this, it's at 31,000 feet. And that should be its cruising altitude because I looked at some other flights and all of them seem to be on that same route and that same altitude for cruising. Down here, this is one of the things that you can get with the American flights. They do post the route online. So here you can see the SSTIK-5. That's the departure Sid, then you've got Susie, eBay, Burger, and then they've got the IRNMN2 arrival. So those, that's the information that we're going to need. So well, let's just put that and make a copy of that. So we're going to be, oh, it's now flying at 32,800. This one's actually flying at 33,000 feet. All right, so we will remember this 33,000 feet because that's what we will put in for hours so that we can follow this exactly. Now, looking at Windy, here we are, here's the San Francisco area, there's the bay. There's the airport right there in the center. It says wind is 210 degrees at four knots. Visibility is eight statute miles. 
and clouds broken at 20,000 feet. So not a bad day in San Francisco and very much VFR. Temperatures 10 degrees Celsius. So it's a little cool there, but not as cold as it is here in England at the minute. Altimeter is 30.26 inches and things look like it's been VFR for quite a little bit. Here's the runways. Now, I'm not sure which runway would actually be used for our takeoff. We will be parked somewhere in this vicinity here. That's on this particular extension. That's going to be where we're parking. This is the uh, area that United Airlines fly in and out of. This is their terminal right there. So we'll be in one of those spots. Looking at KLAX, and there it is. The wind is 0905 knots. Visibility, 10 statute miles and 22,000 feet. So again, not a bad day there, VFR. Temperatures 12 degrees, a little bit warmer. Altimeter is 30.17. Now, looking at the runways, there are four runways there, and they're all quite long, so there's no problem with whichever runway is in use. We should be coming into one of these at the bottom here. That is where the United Airlines terminal is. So it may well be that they will be coming in on the two lower runways. We'll have to find out. We'll see what it is that they have. All right, let's go into Sim Brief. We are Ryanair. We are 186. We're departing from KSFO. And we're going to go to KLAX. Ah, Ontario. I know that code very well. That's the alternate. I've flown in and out of Ontario quite a lot. And there's our aircraft type. And it's brought in all of the information that we need. There it is, ENI is our registration, profile six. Flight time, one hour 25, departed from runway 28 Romeo, arrival 25 left. Passengers, well, we are full, we're that popular. We have one ton of cargo. Altitude, I'm going to put it in here as 330. And then down here, ah, they have a different, a different route. They've got the Susi, the eBay and the Burgle and the IRNM and to arrival, but the departure is is different on this one. That's a different SID. Well, things may have changed. All right, we will save the flights and then we'll generate the flight plan and go from there. So let's see what it gives us. And there it is. There's our route. KSFO, KLAX, Ontario alternate, 330 cruise, airtime 59 minutes. There's the block fuel. There's the routing. And there's the flight route right there with down here is Ontario. All right, let's have a look at some more information. Here on, this is how to read these documents. This is Ryanair 186. We are flying at 330 
and these this right here is the root we're going to need to know cost index six we're going to need to know the average wind on our route right here is the block fuel that we will need to put in and we'll also need to know the reserves and the trip and taxi and this this is the entire route that we've been given and I'll post this also in the description box so that you can pick this up and follow this yourselves now going down The other part that we're going to need is down here. We'll need to know the wind direction and speed at 200, at 150, and at flight level 100. Now uh, there's a lot of information here in the no towns about the airport taxiway seas between tower zulu and uh, taxiway zulu and taxiway uh, romeo is closed useful information right there we're not going to be too bothered by this being in a simulator but nonetheless and there's information about the molen 8 departure our navs and everything else and here's the information about our destination airport all very useful information especially if you were to fly this i mean as as a pilot rather than as a simulator pilot right we'll go all the way down and have a look at the see what the weather is like no significant weather there oh but that is some nice that look at that here's flight level 340 which is closest to ours and see this we have tailwinds oh i like that i do like tailwinds oh yes tailwinds is good okay here's san francisco climb top of climb all the way over here and then descend into klax Here's the troposphere right above us. So we're not going to be as high as that. That's at uh, 40,000 feet. We won't be that high. Right, we have our information. We've got the flight plan. Let's go on into Navigraph charts and let's go ahead and get that ready. All right, click on flights. Click new flight from sim brief and use the latest one that we made. Click on the KSFO and we're going to need airport information. Put a tick mark in that. We're going to need to know parking gates and we're going to need to know the coordinates. This has got us down for runway 28 right. So we'll look at this. Now here is, looks like that is going to be the departure SID. So we will go ahead and put that in. So now these are all charts that can be quickly accessed along the bottom. Right here, we'll go to KLAX. We'll look at the airport info, we'll need it and Parking bays for the terminal will bring those in. This is the approach chart. So we will be pretty much following this coming in and we'll pin that to the bottom. According to this, we're coming in on 25 left. 
So we'll go down here and bring up 25 left. Here we go. ILS runway 25 left, category 23, that is us. So we'll put that in. Let's have a look at that. So once we come in and we go over Santa Monica, over here we'll be given a clearance to come in onto 25 left in that direction. All right, looking at 25 left, ILS runway 25 left. Well, we don't want to go all the way out to Circus, probably. Let's see if we can get in at GAT. So that means we would be coming in here and then swinging around. So this will be our initial approach fix and we'll go from here and we'll make our swing to intercept that to come in to land right there. So that's the plan. If ATC will give us that. All right, we have our flight plan. There it is. Straight down the west coast of California. So, are you ready to go to California? Then let's go into the cockpit and get ourselves started. Ah, oh, there you are, Colin. Do come in. Take your seat, please. Buckle up and let's get ourselves ready. And where are we? Well, we are here at San Francisco International Airport. That's KSFO. Have an interesting situation here with the stand naming system. Now, in reality, when I look at the map, and especially if I look at Google Earth, where I'm located, in actual fact, is E13, stand E13. Now, that's at Terminal 3 on Concourse E, but this particular scenery has changed the names. So I am actually here at stand 65, according to the local scenery, which, which is made by Flight Beam. So, just so that you know where we're parked, if you want to be able to follow this at home, then you will go to stand E65, which is Terminal 3, Concourse E, as in Echo. Right, now, I've been around, I've kicked the tires and I've cleaned the windows. Look how clean they are. <laughs> anyway, I've got the fuel in, we're all ready and set to go. So how about we get ourselves started? Is that a good idea? All right, so we turn on the battery we check that we have enough voltage and then turn on the fuel pumps and then we start the APU. And the APU, if you remember, is located in the tail of the aircraft. That's the engine in the very back in the tail. And so what we're doing is we're starting that engine in order to give us two things. One, we want electricity from the generator. And the second, it's going to provide us with air conditioning if we need it or heat in here and in the main cabin if that's what we need. And of course, we control that right here. We are in control of the temperature. There it is, it's getting ready to kick in. Blue light comes on in a moment. There it is. We now have 115 volts showing up here. 
So now we have enough power to be able to do all the programming that we need on here. So the first thing I'm going to do up here is turn on the IRS. That is going to activate the GPS system, the sat-nav stuff. I'm going to turn on the galley, that way we can get ourselves a cup of tea, ha, if only. Emergency exit lights, those are the lights that go down the aisleway and illuminate the access for the emergency exits. No smoking, fasten seatbelt, and there's the attendant call, but you know, no one ever comes. You just cannot get the staff. And then over here, we'll turn on the left and the right window heat. That's going to warm up these windows in order to keep them dry and clear. I'll turn on the probe. It's an old habit of mine to do that. And there's the hydraulic pumps. And the lights here are saying that the forward service hatch is open and the equipment stairs are down. Because we have self-loading cargo about to board the aircraft. Now over here I'm going to turn on the APU bleed and this of course is going to be for the heating or air conditioning. So turn on that, turn on the fans and the packs and listen. There's that rush of air that's now going through all the nozzles in the main cabin. And then I'm going to turn on the steady light to let people on the ground know that we're in here getting ourselves set up. Right, Colin, let's get ourselves ready now to program the FMC. The first thing we need to do is we need to put in the airport reference. So we are at KSFO, so KSFO, and put that in. We are really at stand E13. Let's put E13 in and see if it brings up anything. No, nothing in the database. So let's put in 65 and see if that comes up. That's not in the database either. So, we are going to have to use the Navigraph to give ourselves the location. So according to this, E13, which is as close as we know we are, should be 37.37.2 and 122.23.0. I'm going to put that in. Now we'll go to root. So we are KSFO and we're going to KLAX. Our flight number is Ryanair RYR 186 is our number. Go down to next page, and here's where we start to put in our route. Now we'll be going direct to Susi first, so that's S U S E Y. And then we go direct to eBay with an E, E B A. Y and an E, and then we go direct to Burgle, E, U, R, and G, L, and then we activate, execute, go to our fix, and that of course is KLAX, and we need a 4 mile circle, we need a 10 mile circle, and we need a 30 mile circle around our destination. Go to forecast. Now, transition level in the United States is flight level 180, so we'll put that in. 
and then we need to put in the wind direction and speed for each of these altitudes that we're putting in here. The Q&H at our destination is 1018. At flight level 200, it is 330 at 22. At 22. And at flight level 150, it is 5 and 13. And at flight level 100, it is 25 and 7. And then we execute that. Go to departures and arrivals. Now here, we are going to have to get our clearance from the ground because we do not know which runway is active. Most of them are active, so we will be directed, of course, to one specific. So San Francisco ground is 121.8. And we're going to depart to the south. San Francisco ground, <coughs> Ryanair 186 with Alpha. Request taxi for takeoff south departure. Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short at runway 1 right using taxiway Alpha Alpha 1. Contact tower on 127.675 when ready. Taxi hold short runway 1 right via taxiway Alpha Alpha 1 Ryanair 186. Well there we have it. Now we're departing from runway 1 right, whereas before we were proposing to leave on runway 7. So now we have to change things on our chart. Instead of runway 28, which is what Simbrief gave us, we're now going to have to change that runway to 1 right. So then that will be the Styx 5 departure that we need. Interesting that uh, the wind does change quite a bit in San Francisco, so we just roll with the punches. So we're going to go from one right, and we'll be using the Styx 5 departure, and we're going to go to the Susi transition and then departure and arrival. We are still proposed to come in on runway seven left. So we'll put ILS seven left in there and it will be the Irma two. There it is, there's the Irma two. And it will be the transition. Now we'll go in and we'll check this route by going into legs, switching to plan, and then going step by step through this, looking for discontinuities. There we go, there's one. So let's see where this takes us. Ah, yes. the so the walker comes after Erman All right we need to go down here to walker comes after that so we'll put that in Now that's bringing us in on a smooth approach descent into a landing. All right. We are set. So we'll go back to map, weather on that, turn on the data, terrain on yours, data there. Since we're going to be departing on runway one right, then that is 14 degrees that we need to set. So I'll set 14 degrees here in the heading. 
and I'll set 14 degrees over here for you too. How's that? We'll be climbing to a cruise altitude of 33,000 feet. So I'm going to put 33 up here for the cabin pressure and the ending elevation is 128 feet. So I'm going to set 100 feet for the landing altitude here. And I'll put in an altitude here in preparation. Not usually done unless ATC does that, but we're presuming here. Now I'm going to go to route, perform the initialization. Now in this, we have 2138 kilograms for reserves. Trip is 2913, making a total of 5051 kilograms, which is 5.0 for our trip. 2.1 for reserves. Double click this and it will calculate the balance for us. Do number six for the cost index. Flight level 330 up at the top there. The average wind is 334.22. The transition altitude in the United States is flight level 180 execute. We'll take the 10 degrees. I would love 10 degrees here in England right now. This morning we had the first snow of the season. We're going to do flaps 10. There's the center of gravity and the trim wheel. Press once on each of those and it will give us V1 rotation speed and V2. So now I'm going to put the V2 in up here at 145. There it is. Turn on the flight director, my side, and then your side. Press the VNAV, press the LNAV buttons. I have a green light behind them. That means we have a good flight plan. So I'll arm there and arm the VOR, and then we are set on that. Well, Colin, we're doing all right. We're getting there. Our passengers are all on. So I'm going to close the door and bring up the stairs. And there it is and verify that the lights have gone off. Now, we're getting ready, so before we start, fuel. Everything is checked, windows all locked, seatbelt signs are on, door lights are out, MCP V2 is all set. Takeoff thrust is correct, speeds are set on the V1, V3, V2, CDU free light is completed, rudder air along is free and zero taxi and takeoff briefing. Now, since we are going to go out, and then we're going to need to go to our right, then we need to go back and put our tail to the left so that we can go to the right. And anti-collision lights are now going on in preparation. Flight continuity, the, your damper is on and the light has gone out, so that is correct. So now we're ready to ask the ground staff to give us a pushback so that we can start. So we want to go out and we want to turn our nose to the left. Select the tug and are you ready? Are you set? Okay, then I'm turning the auto brake to RTO and if we're all set, then buckle up. I'm in position. Are you ready? Which engine do you want to start 
prefer number two, number one, which one? Number one? Then we will start with number one engine. Okay, let's ask the people. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for push and start, tail to the right. Copy that, ready for push, tail right. Release burden rig, please. There we go. Brakes released. Now I'm going to turn off the air conditioning and get ready to switch this now onto generator one, which is the engine number one. Brakes released, here we go. And now I'm going to switch to ground to turn on. Here we go, we're winding up as soon as we get to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. There it is. This is a really detailed airport. Just look at that. That is really superb. Engines have started. There they go. And we have 115 volts. Now, turning on engine number two. Start valve has opened. EGT is rising. We're looking for 24 on the N2. There's 24. It's spinning up nicely. The EGT is rising. There's a little red tick mark here. When that light goes off, then we know that we have good, consistent power coming from each of the engines. And there's engine number two started. And we have uh, 115 volts from engine number two. And we're looking for that tick mark to go off. There it is, settling down. It's gone off. So now we can switch the bus to the main engines for our electricity. Turn on the heating again. Turn off the APU bleed and turn off the APU. We're now running on electricity from the main engines. Houses are out. Look at them. Look at them. He just can't wait to get in front of us. Get out of it. Ah, cheeky.
this is a very detailed airport. Look at this. Away, San Francisco. Look at all the vehicles on it, how detailed they are. I'm keeping my eyes open for any approaching traffic. in here. 
the active. So I'm going to tune into the tower and Positive climb. 
way down to KLAX, exactly where you want it to go today. And so go on into the back, let our magnificent cabin staff treat you to complimentary champagne and caviar. And then when we're on our approach and getting ready to come into Los Angeles, I'll let you know, okay? See you in a little bit. We are at 
30 miles, so let me contact the tower.
graphics for coming in and we are already set with our course at 71 degrees for yours and mine and I'm going to make this 71 because we'll be turning on to final in just a moment we're right on course we're 3600 feet and descending We are 170 knots, so we're doing very well at the moment. Here we go, now we're turning on to our final. The six left and right is to the northern part of the airport and the seven left and right is to the south. United Airlines, they use the seven left to land because that's right next to their terminal. And we're on track, going to flaps 10.
by beginning the cleanup, crew is released. American Pacific Minor 713, ready to go, runway 7 right. And we need to be over here. This looks like number 7 on our left. Look at that. Kamikaze. Kamikaze buses. All right, we're all set. Well, they all drive crazy down here, so gonna have to watch out for this lot. Gonna try to get into this one here. This is Terminal 7 on the left. This is where United Airlines, they come in to park. And right here, look at this, get out of the way. Go on, buzz off. And this is 74, this is perfect. This is perfect. Okay, we'll just pull right into here. Orbit six one one seven clear to land runway six left. Clear to land runway six left. Orbit six one one seven. And whoa there. Right, break on. And engines off, stairs and doors open, lights are off, fast and seatbelt signs are off, your damper off. Going to 124.3, American Pacific Minor 713. Engines are winding down very nicely. Good. All right. So, APU galley is off. Emergency lights off. Window heats off. IRS is off. Probes are off. Hydraulic pumps off. And all is off. Right. Fuel pumps are off. APU is off and battery is off. Shutdown is complete. Right, we made it. And look at how detailed this airport is. This is really amazing. Two very splendid sceneries. KLAX, of course, is made by FS Dream Team and they have put a lot of effort into the design of this particular airport. I mean, it is absolutely magnificent the way that they have done this. And we made it all the way in. We didn't crash. We didn't go into any mountains. We didn't fall into the sea. And the weather was perfect flying weather. And we followed that route, flight level, uh, flight 2604, United Airlines. And this is the United Airlines terminal. This is uh, terminal seven. And we are at stand 74. So we made it. I hope that you enjoyed the flight as much as I enjoyed making it. And Colin, I'm glad you were here. Thank you for making the suggestion. Do appreciate it very much. So I will see you and everyone else on the next flight of Ryanair 186. Bye.